What's going on guys? John out here with you. It is Friday, July 17th, right on the eve of the release of Ghosts of Tsushima. But before we do that, I want to get into the video commentary of The Last of Us Part 2. This is a review and everything else in between. And just like Death Stranding, I know it was a little bit of a longer video, I wanted to get everything that's good about this game and talk about everything else. Because there's a lot to get to. So... Here it is. Let's get the good out of the way right now. What you see right now on the screen is your accessibility options. And in these accessibility options, being someone that I've mentioned before with cerebral palsy, I don't need a lot of help as far as playing games. But being able to see that, being able to notice that if you're deaf, if you're blind, if you have any other kind of you know, situation that you need help with, you can find that in this game. As far as Naughty Dog is concerned, this is an extremely uh, excellent way to use your time to make this game as accessible as it can be. Granted, we are just about over seven years of the initial release from the original to Part 2. A lot of people want to play this game. It's from the PlayStation 3 to the end of that to the end of the PS4 pretty much. This is exactly what you need to do if you want to get everyone involved in playing your game. They are commended in that respect very, very much. It's very, very appreciative. And for me, the combat is fun, just like it was in the initial. Whether you're going out there and you're collecting supplies to be able to craft and get everything else that you need to, when we need to you know, craft bombs or trip mines or smoke bombs or bullets or things like that, you're able to always do that, just like the original game. And a big bonus is the areas, as you would expect going from PS3 to PS4, the areas are ever more expansive, so it's not just video game cover for the sake of having cover. The areas are so expansive, kind of like uh, akin to Uncharted 4, you know, the same game as Naughty Dog and all of that stuff. You have cover where you can actually go prone in this game, which is a new feature. And as I played throughout any of this in the campaign, because it's all you get is a single player campaign, no multiplayer to speak of, but as I played, whether I wanted to use brute force, whether I wanted to use smarts, whether I wanted to use cover, everything that I wanted to do, the gameplay felt comfortable. It was nice to be able to play a stealthy approach and mix it up and not be penalized, not be forced into situations where I had to approach the situation in one way and one way only. Last of Us did an excellent job of being able to just do what you want to do in any given situation it always felt satisfying obviously as you would expect the animations are quite gorgeous everything looks beautiful whether it's the grass blades the snow the mud the water everything else like that when you're killing someone the utmost ruthlessness and blood and the gurgling even though that can be a little bit uh, over construed there it is of the utmost detail when you have Ellie or Abby and we'll talk about that too when they're going to the uh, little workbenches everything is animated on these guns whether you're pull, pulling back you're taking stuff off putting things on it's always well animated but I also ask and I'm not gonna throw the accessibility options in there because I think that that's incredible that they put that in there but I also ask is too much of this stuff taking away from other things that could have had a little brushed up and needed to be in this game. And also, one last thing I want to mention that I loved about this game was being able to see the community on YouTube and everywhere else, the Discord servers and all that, be able to rock out on Ellie's guitar. It was the same guy that did the cover of Nothing Else Matters and Hurt by Johnny Cash and even had Mark Hoppus do uh, Blink-182's Damn It. It was cool to see all of that stuff. So, I gotta mention this. The original was outstanding, as we all know, and when I did the initial review, because PlayStation 4 allows you to do share uh, and all of that, you had Last of Us Remastered, so it was a few years ago when I did that, and I obviously gave the original Last of Us a 10 out of 10. So the initial release in June of 2013, just over seven years, part two, you know, gamers have patiently waited to see what was going to happen with the story between Joel and Ellie, because what made the original so great was he had Joel, and yeah, he was an asshole, but he was our asshole, right? And there were complete strangers meeting up with each other and Joel and Ellie. Joel had just gone through the 
a horrific accident of losing his daughter, Sarah. You know, the stuff that pretty much made us cry in the initial game, right out from the onset, right out from the jump, you're able to be connected with Joel, and you renew your in for a fucking experience when you're playing Last of Us. It was a, a beautifully told story that was emotionally heartbreaking at the same time, and being able to see Joel and Ellie's relationship just expand the way that it was was absolutely incredible. It was a beautiful story. The gameplay was immersive. The gameplay was good. The story was immersive. It was powerful. The set pieces were great. Everything was so good. You know you know the post-apocalyptic world. I know they're infected, but it's kind of like zombies. We talked about that with Resident Evil and all that. It's been done to death, right? But then Last of Us in the original did it so well that nobody really cared about all of that. It was just a great game. And enemies with the infected had a claustrophobic feel. You had some unease. But now in Last of Us 2, you have a bunch of humans. So that kind of takes away from some of that. And even in the initial game, you know, you had the appreciation for Ellie. As she took the time to appreciate, you know, music. Play games. Play pranks on Joel. And even with all the stuff that she went through, have a sense to have uh, a nose for exploration and like to make us laugh. You know, all these things, we had that connection. And together, with both of them, with Joel and Ellie, you had a semblance of hope that they could make it through. And no matter what would happen, their relationship would always be kept together, and nothing could take that away. And the ending to the original was so immensely satisfying, even though, like we mentioned, you know, with Joel, he made that decision to save Ellie. Ellie can get bit by the infected, and she doesn't turn. The Fireflies wanted her. And Joel didn't know that if Ellie was taken with the fireflies and Ellie didn't know either that she would be killed but the elixir that they were able to make pretty much or whatever you want to call it the cure that they were able to make would have been able to save everybody but because Joel already lost his daughter Sarah you would kind of figure that Ellie is the daughter figure to Joel and he didn't want to lose someone else again so he made the decision he made so thinking about that and thinking about already putting Last of Us in a top 10 regard as one of the best games of all time. After 7 plus years, Absence didn't make the heart grow fonder. So you think you had all this fucking time to make this game the greatest it could possibly be. You know, Neil Druckmann, the director behind Last of Us, the writer and all of that, pretty much wrote the perfect story to Last of Us Remastered. And maybe some of us, even though you do want to see, see a sequel, and I know it's been selling like crazy and all that across the UK and all across the world. It's the fastest selling game in PlayStation 4 and one of the fastest selling games in history, honestly. I mean, it's outsold Animal Crossing for fuck's sake. The game is the game is nuts as far as that. But you think with all this time, Neil and his team would have a chance to at least make the story make some fucking sense. Because this is the problem. Neil Druckmann is quoted in this game, and this is not talking about, you know, the, the bad business practices. I'm not comparing Naughty Dog to Konami, but there was a recent article from Kotaku, uh, rest that site anymore, because that's not there anymore, that was talking about all of the bad business practices in Naughty Dog, right? And then Neil goes out in this game, he gets pissed off about that, and he says, I don't want this game to be considered fun. He says, I don't want this game to be considered fun. I consider it more of an art thing. Here we go again, Hideo Kojima, Death Stranding, crap like that. And then when there are some detractors, and I'm not just talking about the embargo reviews that gave you know all these things 10 out of 10s, but you got to think Sony and Naughty Dog, the hands in the pocket and all of that, that's just the way it is all these 10 out of 10s, then he goes out and says, anyone that doesn't uh, give my game a 10 or a 9 obviously doesn't understand the game. And then he goes out and tells his other team in the emails, I appreciate everything you guys have done and fuck the haters for anyone that doesn't like our game. It's pretty much what this guy is quoted as saying. So then what he does, you know what he did with fuck the haters? Well, he just fucked all of us. Because you know what he did? He took this story and everything else that we cared about with all these characters and flushed it down the fucking toilet. He might as well have just opened his ass cheeks and diarrhea right inside all of our mouths. Because that's pretty much what he did. In his context, it's a giant fuck you to all of us that cared about this game, that cared about these characters. Because the story doesn't make any sense. Right? We talk about it from the very beginning of it. What a game is and what fun is, really. And 
And if you don't want your game to be considered fun, you want it to be considered art, go do something else. Go make a fucking movie. Don't concentrate on making games and things like that. So the story is very convoluted and boring. So right away, the cat was out of the bag, right? You see that Joel dies right away within the first two hours of the game. Well, this game is about 30 hours plus long. Yes, there is a new game option. If you do want to get more of your stuff and you're a trophy hunter, you can do that. But right out of the gate, Joel dies. So you already know what Ellie's going to do for the entire fucking 28 hours. Or at least you have Ellie on the cover, right? So you think it's going to be her game? No. About less than halfway through, you go into a second character, Abby, with the WLF and everything else, and you get to see her side of the story. We did not wait seven and a half years to play as another character. Nobody gives a shit about Abby or anything else like that. Nobody cares. We talked about what made the original great. It's cutscenes like this. This is one of the very few cutscenes in Last of Us 2 that actually did my heart something positive. I felt something incredible here to see Joel and Ellie in a flashback of her birthday and Joel trying to make everything else right considering of the events that happened. Things like that. This is all what we wanted to see. Yes, we all knew that Joel probably was going to die. He didn't have a lot of friends in the initial game and he did some pretty bad things. He's not the most role model stand-up citizen on earth okay we all know that but if you're gonna fucking kill him at least you have to do it at the end of the game that's how you make a good cliffhanger for last of us three because you know eventually that's gonna get released this game sold too damn well to not have a sequel but why do you gotta do it at the beginning of the game it already ruins everything else that we know is going to happen it's so stupid and then what ends up happening with this game also after that happens is there's flashbacks and there's flash forwards and that's fine games that do those kind of things all the time but if you ever flash back and flash forward inside of a flashback and another flash forward I'm fucking confused. I don't know what's happening. Nobody knows what's happening. That doesn't make any sense. It's like Neil was sitting at the typewriter and he pretty much slammed his head against it like 42,000 times and then he painted out the script and said, okay, done, let's make this a game. He had no idea what he was doing there. Are you going to try to do this stuff to be edgy? Are you going to try to do this stuff to be different? No. How about make the game that everyone else wanted to make? How about elaborate on the story that everyone wanted to talk about? Couldn't you do more as far as Joel and Ellie and Ellie not forgiving Joel for the decision of keeping her alive when she could have saved everyone else? Couldn't you go more into depth of that story because that's what everybody wanted? Couldn't you go and see how Joel could try to repair some of that stuff or some of the things that Ellie would do? Nobody cares about any of these other characters. So here's why I talk about this and we'll go into this more. Do the choices in the original even matter? I mean, honestly, do they? When you when you play through this game, everything happens so quick with the Joel anyway, so that's done, so you know the choice of revenge and Ellie and all that stuff is going to eventually happen, but then, as you go throughout the game, you find out that Ellie doesn't even finish the revenge, and we'll talk about that more, but you have games like this that have taken so long, and I talk about, you know, Mass Effect and EA and Bioware, that Mass Effect was one of the most beloved RPGs during the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era, three games, all of them great, but when you get to the finale, when you get to the ending of Mass Effect 3, it was so horrible and the community was so outraged that EA and Bioware had to patch in something else to try to ease things over. You're talking about all of the choices and things carrying over and things that should fucking matter and they don't. And this doesn't. And here again, this is a cutscene that doesn't make any damn sense. You know in the in our initial game that Ellie loved pun books, she loved music, she loved games. Why does she not pick up the fucking PS Vita? I don't mind Sony plugging in their own handheld that has pretty much died. But Ellie would be rocking out to that shit. Come on guys, what are we doing? So, Ellie and Abby, I talk about a dual cover. And that's pretty much what it should have been. As you see Ellie on The Last of Us Part 2 cover... I thought the whole game was about Ellie, but I'm spending most of the time playing as Abby. You know, they say about half. I say a little bit over half, because I played a little bit longer sections of that and had to kind of start over it. Why the fuck would I care about a character that I don't know anything about in the first place? So here's the problem that I have throughout most of this. So you have Ellie, and she has to obviously go through the revenge plot of Joel. 
But then the game pretty much decides that Ellie's a piece of shit because she kills dogs and she kills humans and she does anything to try to get in her way to revenge Joel. But Abby? Oh, she's only doing that because she's trying to save her dad. Well, isn't that the same fucking thing? I don't care that Joel shot Abby's dad. We didn't know that that was Abby's dad, one of the Firefly doctors and all that. Oh, let's just throw this in there to make us feel bad about Abby. Oh, because Ellie killed some dogs. We're going to name this dog Alice during Ab or Abby's gameplay. And Abby gets to play with the dog, throw things around, and oh, look how great she is. Look how awesome she is to animals. Oh, killing's not justified for Ellie, but killing is so justified for Abby. Look at her mission. Look at her strength. She's on a hero's quest. Fuck that. That doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. So, here's the other thing. Abby's a piece of shit, too. And even Mel, the pregnant lady that gets killed, and who really cares if Ellie, honestly, in this point, which it, this bothered me, too, Ellie kills Mel, right? She's pregnant, and she gets all PTSD. Ellie didn't get any fucking PTSD when she murdered, like, 700 other people in this game. So, how, do, how does that make any sense? So, Mel, before, in the gameplay, calls Abby a piece of shit. Well, everybody in the WLF is a piece of shit. Nobody's better than anybody. Everybody just goes on killing everybody else. What are they really accomplishing? Am I really going to call Abby a hero because she tries to save some transgender character and has some revelation of, oh, she gets some sleep at night because she saved this character? When the characters that are brought in to the game have make no sense as far as The Last of Us timeline in the original? I, I, what, what does that have to do with anything? The dog killing is what pissed me off too. It's because Ellie has to go through this stuff. Obviously, you have to kill the things that are in your way. When you're playing most of these games, right, you kill dogs or you kill anything else, obviously you're not going to go in real life and kill your dogs or kill your cats or kill animals. You love animals, right? But you have to do it in the game because obviously it's a deterrent. It pisses you off. But then when you go on the other side of the gameplay and you think it's totally cool and you can get away with it, well, I mean, what the hell is the team even thinking? And here, I want to talk about this too. So Sony does a lot of things here as far as censorship and I know we don't see a lot of these games because obviously they get censored if they're even over here but a lot of the things in Japan it's like haha ha, team romance and things like that and everyone can make fun of me because sometimes I like the anime and uh, school drama and stuff like that I, I really appreciate it. I have a soft spot for it so you can make fun of me if you want but a lot of those games that come in there you know you have some RPG type elements you save the world stuff you've seen before like that so those games they don't come over here. They get censored because they have maybe some hints at sex or some not flat out hentai moments, but some things that are completely uncomfortable. I want to talk about something that made me completely uncomfortable. And no, I can't even show you the fucking video because even if I was getting monetized and I had millions of followers, which I never will, I'll be lucky if I ever have more than 10. But here's the thing in this game, I get to see. Abby and Owen. And Owen, I really don't give a shit about Abby and Owen's relationship. Owen, he's got some parts where maybe he wants to get out of that, the WLF and all that. But who really gives a, a frog's fat ass about that? Like, it, it's not even really developed at all. So, then I get this cutscene between Abby and Owen that are going together and talking about things. And they say, Oh, Abby, come back with me. I miss you, and this and that. And you know, she fights up. Oh, I gotta go do something else, or oh, I gotta go do something else. Well, you know they're gonna end up doing something. So they get into this cutscene where it's a pity scene, and all of a sudden they start making out hot and heavy, and he's taking off her shirt. All of a sudden, Abby's taking off all her clothes, and I kid you not, she gets bent over and she starts getting fucked doggy style. All right, Sony does not allow any of that shit in their game, but it's funny. That in this Last of Us 2, in this Sony exclusive, that all of a sudden it's okay? Are you telling me that Neil Druckmann is on the table with all these Sony execs and they say, Neil, I, man, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't put this in the game. I want her to get fucked doggy style. Neil says, and that that's comfortable? You know, people on the internet are stupid because they talk about, oh, it's uncomfortable that Ellie's a lesbian. Or, oh, it's uncomfortable that there's transgenders in there. Like, that shit doesn't matter. Get over yourself. It's 2020. But at the end of the day, when I want to see something in a video game, I mean, if I want to watch porn, you can go on fucking Pornhub and watch all that stuff. I don't need to be seen in a video game, someone getting pounded doggy style, and on top of that, the, the, 
the scene between Abby and Owen and their relationship is horrible, right? They don't even have a good relationship. And then you're going to force a sex scene on top of that? There's no context that these two actually love each other. I mean, look at this in this context of Ellie and Dina. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of it, but you could tell that Ellie and Dina truly love each other and they care about each other. That's something that the player can actually connect with, not Abby and Owen's forced fucking relationship. And what's the deal with Mel, too, as far as pregnancy and killing and things like that? But she's on the front lines with, like, I don't know, seven, eight months pregnant, something like that, with the baby all that showing, but she's in there pounding her stomach against ladders, and she's talking about doing right by kids with Abby when she's really not even doing right by her own kid when she's pregnant with. Please, that shit doesn't make any sense. So there was a couple things that could have been capitalized in this game, right? So in the end of it, obviously, you see at the very beginning that, you know, Ellie and Joel and the killing and stuff like that. But there was a cutscene toward the end of the game where, or supposed end of the game, where you thought Ellie and Dina would be living happily ever after in this farmhouse with the sheep and everything else that they wanted. Uh, there was a cutscene in there where Ellie had PTSD of going in the barn and seeing Joel and having that stuff and having, you know, not being able to save Joel. That would have been something they totally could have expounded upon. Some kind of humanistic element for Ellie after considering all that killing that nothing's ever fucked her up, that that actually fucked her up. That was one of the very brief, maybe like 30 second cutscenes that actually could have mattered that they could have put in this game, but they didn't do it. Uh, that just doesn't make any sense. Hey, There's a few other things in this game, too, that don't make any other sense to me. And I want, I want to talk about this, and always let me know what you think. Facebook.com slash TBU Gunslinger, Twitter, at John Ryan Ott. So, Joel, in his heart, you know, he has this cutscene with, especially in this game, one of the few that you get with Ellie in Last of Us Part 2, and obviously the best parts of this game are cutscenes with Joel in them, and Ellie's relationship. I mean, bar none, you can say what you want, you can say I'm, you know, not giving Abby a fair shake and this and that, but obviously I can tell you Naughty Dog didn't do a good job of making us care about those characters anyway, or developing any of that. So Joel and Ellie are at a dance, Ellie's dancing with Dina, you know, Dina kisses Ellie, and then toward the end of it, Ellie gets a little upset that Joel has something to say. You know, this is after all the events, you're going to Jackson and all of that. But Joel said, I would be very happy for you, Ellie, if you ended up with Dina. Dina would be perfect. Dina would be lucky to have someone like you. I care about you a lot. Stuff like that. So that, that sentiment that really we really, really care about as fans of the first game. And, you know... We don't, we don't get enough of that. We don't get to see enough of Ellie's backstory. All we get is a sense of revenge, right? So then at the end of the game, at the very end of the game, Ellie decides she wants to leave Dina after everything else is already perfect. You don't think Joel would question that decision? That's where the game should have ended. Everything else was good. Ellie could have said, I let go of everything else. I've done everything that I can do. It's time for me to move on. I've done the best I could. I can be happy with Dina. End it that way. And we could be okay with the shitty ending, even though that would, been a, that would have been an acceptable one. But we would have been okay with it. This game could have been fine. But then, Ellie decides to leave. Leave Dina. Go ahead and find Abby again, as you see in this cutscene shortly after. They're going to fight. I'm not going to show that at the end of it, but shortly after, they're going to fight. And then Ellie sees a flashback of Joel, lets Abby walk away, and then the game fucking cuts to credits, and it's done. She, Ellie goes back to find Dina. Dina's not there. Dina said she would leave if Ellie left again, and then the game ends. And people talk that that's like the most masterful ending on the fucking planet. Get out of here. Uh, everything that you guys talk about, you 10 out of tenors. You say that this game is perfect. The story's so goddamn convoluted. It doesn't make any sense. Do, obviously, do you care about the Seraphites? Do you care about transgender love? Do you care about uh, the sister? Do you care about, oh, seeing those cutscenes of the WLF of the five seconds before they make some stupid generic remark that Ellie has killed them previously? What makes that so great? And what makes Ellie and Abby so different? Why try to force a new character on us that it doesn't matter? So, a couple other things here for you. 
So a couple other things that I have to mention here before we get going. I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. Um, so Joel and Tommy, the killing at the beginning of the game, did it make much sense to you that you're playing as Abby, okay, and then you go ahead, you have the cutscene, the fight against the infected and things like that, and then Tommy just goes out to Joel and Abby and says, oh, by the way, I'm Tommy. That's my brother Joel. Abby is the one that's looking for someone named Joel. Why the hell would Tommy go out nonchalantly, you know, especially Joel's got like 25, 30 years of experience. I'm not f as sure as to far as how, you know, where Tommy goes in that timeline. But they know that Abby is looking for Joel. Why would you go ahead and mention that? And it was perfectly done in the Angry Joe show and Jim Sterling and some of that stuff on YouTube and social media where he made fun of that one of that one of his videos and he goes, Hey, my name's Joel and Tommy, and we're not guarded at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., and we don't have a lot of bullets, and this and this and this and this. It's like pretty much he opened his fucking mouth, and Abby had everything else that she already needed. Getting everything else killed off. It, it didn't make any sense, and I'm pretty fucking irritated as far as what this game should have been. You know, if it's clear, as I mentioned, that Neil didn't know what to do, then it's okay to end on Last of Us, on Last of Us Remastered. The game was pretty much perfect in a lot of regards. If you really didn't know what to do after seven years, then you didn't need to make the second game just to be able to sell copies. Go ahead and work on something else. That's what should have been done because this game was completely rushed. And here's the other thing, if you wanted to make the story make sense, all you really had to do, and it wouldn't have been the best thing in the world, but it sure would have been better than anything else here, was just move the story around a little bit. Instead of going all these stupid flash forwards, flash back, as we mentioned, Go ahead and put Joel's death at the end, and then you know you have a Last of Us Part of 3, and people are going to be stuck and hooked into it. No, it wouldn't be a better game than the first one, but it sure would have made a hell of a lot more sense. You talk about the character development, the character switching. You talked about Neil Druckmann throwing in Metal Gear Solid 2 as an inspiration for the character switching. Well, dumbass, okay? And Metal Gear Solid 2, Solid Snake did not get killed within the first hour on the fucking boat. That would have ruined the game. That would have ruined everything Hideo Kojima and Konami is trying to do. And in a sense, it ruined everything in this game as far as Last of Us 2 and this story arc and all of that. It just didn't make any sense. That's the inspiration you're going to take? Well, obviously, you should have fucking went through the whole Metal Gear Solid 2 and figured out why it was good. Don't just blatantly draw from something and say, oh, this is my inspiration, and if you don't like it, you're a fucking hater, and go fuck yourself, and I can do whatever I want, and I don't want my game to be considered fun. I want it to be considered art. Well, then, you should have just left it alone. <clears throat> You should have just left it alone. You pretty much ruined this game for everyone else that even cared about the first one. And my interesting th thought here is, what if you didn't play the first game? What if you just played Last of Us Part 2? I want to know what you guys think of Last of Us Part 2. Did the story really even make much sense to you as far as the flashbacks and things like that? Because I'm guessing even on that retrospect, on that aspect, it wouldn't make much sense either. I don't think there really is any way that they had the story as you know made it as it is right now like if the story was still the same and you didn't play the first last of us would this story make any sense to you i, I don't think it would and i i don't think that rushing all of these characters made much sense you know what as we mentioned there are some people <clears throat> i'm not one of them but i did get a lot of the uh multiplayer gameplay through uh, factions and stuff like that in the original Last of Us, especially in Remastered with all the DLC and all that. I had a lot of fun playing that, honestly. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. It was kind of like Gears of War a little bit, you know? So, instead of making this game about 30, 35 hours long, you know, ending it where you probably should have ending it where with Ellie and Dean at the farmhouse, then you could have had a multiplayer package in that to be able to give this game a little bit more of a run. Because I can guarantee you, even though there's a new game plus in here, nobody's going to give a flying fuck about going back to it just to try to get a few trophies. Unless you're a trophy masochist, unless you're a trophy whore, there's nothing for you after this game is done. And you know, inevitably, as I mentioned, this game sold so fucking well anyway that you're going to make a third game. It's going to happen, but what are you going to do now? 
What are you going to have Ellie slip on a fucking banana peel in the third game and die and that's going to be the end of it? What are you going to do? How is this stuff going to make any sense? If you're going to make a game with Ellie, you should have done that in the second game. She's on the goddamn cover for Christ's sake. This was supposed to be her story. And then you go ahead and you throw all these convoluted characters in there in a story that doesn't make any sense. You don't give anything any time to develop. And then you say, here, Last of Us Part 2. Enjoy. No multiplayer to speak of either. And I know that's not a deal breaker for a lot of you that want a single player experience. But if the game was shorter and you had a little bit more of a multiplayer aspect, there could at least have been other things that could have been salvageable. Because, yeah, the game plays pretty good, but it doesn't do anything to differentiate itself from the first game if you liked everything from the first game you really don't get that much more better weapons it's all the same stuff like that and Christ's sake if you wanted Ellie and Abby to be different you could have at least gave them some different weapons you could have at least gave them some different play styles you talk about all these crafting books and things and all the stuff you find out in the field and Sony touted it oh and you know, Last of Us 2 and Naughty Dog touted it. Oh, you can play the game any way you want to. We're not going to penalize you and all of that. I mean, all these skill trees that you get throughout these books are going to make things different. Make things wonderful for you. Change the experience. Well, with all the limited number of resources and, quite frankly, the uh, uninviting skills and all of that, it really doesn't make anything different. A Abby plays as Abby and Ellie plays as Ellie and Ellie and Abby play as each other. Who the fuck gives a shit? Nothing is even different. At least for Joel, at least for Ellie, things were different. And their playing sections from the first game were especially different. You know, Ellie couldn't swim. Ellie had this other charm. They shared this incredible relationship. And you pretty much crapped all over that. I, I don't understand. That's what everyone was sitting there waiting for. You didn't give anybody what you wanted. This game sucks. And at the end of the day, if you're talking about a death stranding situation as I mentioned before if you wanted to give the gameplay a zero because there wasn't any gameplay in death stranding but you wanted to give the graphics a 10 zero and 10 still averages to a 5 so if I want to give the graphics and all that stuff a 10 but I want to give the story a fucking zero on those two ratings the game would still be rated a 5 pretty much guys I can't rate this game any higher than a 6 it's fucking impossible. In a game like this that depends on the story. Depends on the story. It's a story driven experience. That's what you got this game for. Story sucks ass. So what is left? It's just more of the same as far as the first one is gameplay. It's a carbon copy except that you can prone. Who cares? Stick with the first game. That's all you need. Everybody's frustrated, and if you're not frustrated, you're just one of those fanboys, honestly, that had that embargo review that goes ahead and gives 10 out of 10s, but you can't talk about the entire second half of the game when you play as Abby. And if you get those situations right, where Ellie and Abby finally face off, you get in one of those situations, it's much more fun to have Abby jump off a cliff or be butchered by Ellie. You know, just do that stuff over and over and over again, and shut the game off, that's what Last of Us 2 should have been. The whole thing is fucked. This is John Ott signing off the re review of Last of Us Part 2. Ghost of Tsushima comes out tomorrow, so it's going to be better days for all of us. I appreciate you guys for listening. Talk to you soon. Peace out. And if you have any questions or any thoughts and concerns, as always, get at me. Facebook.com slash TBGunsinger. Twitter at John Ryan Ott. As always, peace. Have a good one.